Well, a very good morning, everyone, and welcome to Damn Good Mornings. I'm your cruise director, Tam. And I'm your tech expert, Evan. Hi, Evs. Hey, Tam. <laughs> so, as you can see today, we're in a very special place. First of all, if you look out the windows, we're in Glacier Bay, which is beautiful. amazing. Yeah, super beautiful. But we're also on the bridge. Which is also beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> this is probably my favorite place of filming so far. Yeah, yeah. And to top it off, we're sitting in the bridge chairs. So are they very nice and comfy? Guess his chair I'm in. <clears throat> captain's. I am in the captain's chair. Ooh, yeah. Hopefully he doesn't walk in. Uh, that's why, that's why I didn't sit there. <laughs> <laughs> He's setting me up for failure. <laughs> well, yes, Glacier Bay, absolutely gorgeous. So make sure you head out onto the open decks today because that's what it's all about. Yeah, and most importantly, make sure you charge your cameras. All right, you don't want to be out there and have your camera die and then you have to go charge it for a couple hours. So charge it in advance. Trust me, you need to do it. I always <laughs> nominate my husband to do it so that if it doesn't happen, I have someone to blame. That's actually a great <laughs> thing. I'm going to start nominating him too. <laughs> Adrian's in charge of all the cameras. Everybody's on board. cameras. <laughs> now, uh, if you haven't yet noticed, we do have our rangers making narration throughout the day. They came on board at 7 a.m., so uh, you will hear them on all the open decks. Yep. They'll also be broadcast in the crow's nest as well as on your TV on channel 41. But hopefully, you're not in your room. No, get <laughs> out there. Also, in the crow's nest, they have a little table set up where you can get some uh, National Park souvenirs, which is really nice. That's really cool. Yeah. And you can ask them questions too. They have some time for meet and greet too. So uh, that's really cool. Actually, funny story. All right, so last cruise, I went up to listen to them. They were originally scheduled to be talking from the crow's nest. Okay. So they have a microphone and was broadcast around the ship. Um, however, they were doing their talk from the crow's nest and they were telling us why the glaciers appear blue is because the ice absorbs every color but blue. And then one of our guests, <laughs> I'm not gonna mention who, one of our guests asked, excuse me, sir, what color is but blue? But. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Took him a while. Hopefully you got it earlier than Evan did. Actually, <laughs> our, uh, our <laughs> ranger replied, actually, ma'am, that's the color your bum turns when you sit on a glacier too long. That's, that's fast. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it's true. But blue, I guess. But yeah, good work. <laughs> nice one. I'm glad you're with us. Well, right now, Kelly will be interviewing one of our rangers. So over to you, Kels. Good morning, Bull and Nam. My name's Kelly. I'm your location guide here on this beautiful vessel. And today I have with me our special guests. And uh, we have two park rangers with us today. Uh, it's a very exciting day because today is Glacier Bay Day. <laughs> it is the best day of the cruise. So I'm, I'm hoping that you're awake and perky and ready for the excitement that is Glacier Bay. So, um, as I said, I'm Kelly, this is Zach, and this is J uh, JT, Jake, JT, um, and uh, I'm thrilled to have both of them here with me today, and I'm going to ask them some questions, some park ranger questions, and, uh, and then you can come up to the crow's nest and ask them questions later. All right, so, how many seasons have each of you been park rangers? Do you want to go first, JT? Uh, well, I started about 12 seasons ago. 12 seasons? Yep, and I have eight seasons in seven different parks. Wow. All right, how many parks? Six national parks. Six parks, 12 seasons, seven parks, eight seasons. Yes. All right. So which of the parks that you've worked is your favorite? Oh, man. Um, I'd say Shenandoah is probably my favorite because yeah. uh, it's close to where I grew up. Uh, so it's really easy to visit family and uh, it's really accessible too so there's a lot of really good hiking that you can do there. Nice. Well, JT? Uh, well apart from Glacier Bay, uh, probably Glacier National Park Montana simply because I love the alpine environment and I love to hike. Awesome. So which of the parks that you've worked in was your least favorite? <laughs> oh man, that's a baited It's tough. Question. That's a tough question. Ooh. Ooh. Well, all of our national parks are great. <laughs> but, uh, 
I did find a snake in the washing machine once in the Everglades, so Ooh. I'm not a snake person. Okay. So that's just me. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, the Everglades is beautiful. It's a tough park to, uh, it's tough accessibility. You know, you, you, it's kind of like Glacier Bay. You have to be on a moving vehicle and you mm-hmm. only see little bits. So, yeah. But no buffet in the movie. But no buffet. No, yeah, no yeah. and snakes. Yeah. So, and snakes. <laughs> I would I would say my most challenging park is actually here at Glacier Bay because of that accessibility issue. So, right. really the only way you can visit is in some form of vessel. Right. And uh and so it's great to get to spend time on the cruise ships and to see a lot of the stuff, but not as much hiking opportunities. Hmm. Yes, tricky, tricky for the hiking because yeah. first you'd have to go out on a kayak or mm-hmm. you know, come out on a bigger vessel, get in a smaller vessel. Go camp. to land, camp, that kind of stuff. Exactly. So, um, yeah. How about that? All right. Um, let's see. What else should we ask our park rangers today? Uh, now, I'm a huge fan of national parks. I've been visiting. Uh, I can't. I haven't counted the number I've visited yet, but uh, I should do that. And um, this is a big year for the parks, right? There's a big campaign going on mm-hmm. with the parks. I believe it's called Find Your Park. Exactly, yeah. So August 2016 is the Park Service Centennial. And so uh, Find Your Park is our campaign. We're trying to get people to uh, look into different places that they could visit, places uh, maybe across the country or just right around the corner from where they are. So there's 412 Park Service sites all around the country and 59 national parks. Awesome. So lots of opportunities everywhere that you go. And the big deal is we want you to share the word with other people. So, exactly. Uh, so share it on social media or even just friends and family getting the word out there. Mm-hmm. Um, we really want to see a lot more youth in our parks. We're not seeing as much youth. <gasps> and, uh, yeah, exactly. <gasps> They're going to be the ones that are protecting the, the parks in the next generation. So well, it's a big deal that we get, get I am youth in. I am doing my part. I have a nephew and, uh, well, first of all, I'm a photographer. So we'll talk more about photography later. But um, whenever I visit national parks, I take photographs and I do post them to my social media and then I make little books so I make a little uh, blur book of various experiences and I I have one in the works for Glacier Bay Um, I have one uh, that I did for a vacation in Yellowstone and such but um, uh, I actually choose my vacation spots based on national parks so which national park what I can see what I can photograph and what time of year is good to visit because I have visited some of the parks down in the southwest and you've worked there it is hot in the middle of the summer. So I prefer to be in Alaska in the middle <laughs> of the summer and enjoy the weather here in Glacier Bay. So Definitely. very, very cool. Well, let's see. What else can I ask you? Um, how about silly questions that you get as a ranger? I know I get silly questions all the time. Like when I lived in Vail, Colorado, they published a list on April Fool's Day that the bus drivers of okay. silly questions. Oh, yes, that's and, good. Uh, we're at, in a cruise ship. We came in from the Pacific Ocean, so uh, you're still at sea level. <laughs> exactly. Yes. I've, I've gotten that one, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah? JT? Well, someone once asked me if I'd ever had a girlfriend before, and of course I have. I'm adorable. But <laughs> <laughs> Also, excellent. Um, excellent. a few folks have thought maybe we were in Russia, so... Oh, yes, yeah. yeah. Sarah Palin has confused the world a little bit. <laughs> or, yeah, Tina yeah. Le Fay or whatever. Yeah, Tina yeah. Fey, good Sarah skit, Palin. Yeah, yeah, good stuff, good stuff. So. Exactly. Um, I very often um, am asked, even though I'm not a ranger, I, I do know things, and I do a talk about wildlife, and people say, Kelly, when will I see a polar bear? And I said, uh, yeah, you know, uh, are you going to Anchorage? Because they live in the zoo there. Um, But uh, other than that, you have to go about 1,200 miles north of here. So definitely people see ice, they think polar bear, Mm -hmm. not going to see it here. Yeah, I always tell people if you took the state of Alaska and put it over the continental U.S., we are in Florida. Mm -hmm. To see a polar bear, you'd have to go up to Wisconsin. Exactly. So we're, although you're close, you're still rather far away from where we would see polar bears or narwhals or anything like that. Exactly. Exactly. Well, it's a very exciting day here in Glacier Bay. And um, just to let everyone know kind of what happens, um, these lovely gentlemen or other park rangers that visit, because different park rangers come every week. And uh, we also have a cultural interpreter, uh, a Klinket cultural interpreter and uh, we'll talk more about that later Um, but we also have a representative from Alaska Geographic so 
Um, if this map does not have enough information for you, there are fantastic publications that Alaska Geographic puts out and uh, you can buy children's books, you can get a, a, a national park passport to stamp, you can get um, pins and patches and hats and all sorts of educational materials and fun stuff uh, as well. So um, you kind of bring the park service to the ship in person and they bring a nice little park store and all of uh, the Alaska Geographic is a nonprofit all the profits um, uh, all the money uh, goes back into Alaska's national parks so mm -hmm. that's what's really fantastic and you can get a membership and magazines and anyway it's a great way to support uh, the national parks specifically the Alaska parks so mm -hmm. um, exciting stuff now um, we also have some kids programs right and um, I, I've been working on my Junior Ranger badge. And so I think you just have a couple last questions for me and then maybe I can be sworn in. Oh man, JT, do you have a question? Do I have a question for you? Yes. Well, did you pay attention to my commentary? <sighs> yes, I did. The one I didn't actually give today. <laughs> <laughs> well, Zach did it heard today. It before. But I yeah, have, yeah. yes. So it counts. Yes. Zach gave it today. Did you uh, learn anything new about glaciers? Did I learn anything new? Hmm. You've been here a few times. You know so. what? Um, I, I don't think that I necessarily learned anything new, but I saw new aspects of the glacier because as an observer, I, I uh, look at the glacier and I'm lucky enough to see it every week and all of the changes. And so while I don't think I learned anything technically new because I have studied my stuff, um, I saw new things. What's your favorite color? Glacial blue. <laughs> That's the right answer, folks. The only answer here in Glacier Bay. So because Kelly answered all these questions correctly and she paid attention week after week, she gets a special prize. But there's something she has to do first. Oh. Something that your children can do as well. And we'll tell you how in just a second. We have this cool little badge called a Junior Ranger badge. And Kelly has earned it today. But I have to swear her in, so I'm gonna ask her to raise her right hand and repeat after me. I promise. I promise. As a Glacier Bay, as a Glacier Bay. Junior Ranger. Junior Ranger. To help protect. To help protect. Our national parks. Our national parks. I will spend less time. I will spend less time. Playing video games. Playing video games. And more time. And more time. Playing outside. Playing outside. And I will obey. And I will obey. My parents. My parents. And everything. And everything. They tell me to do. They tell me to do. If they promise. If they promise. To take me. To take me. To another national park. To another national park. Within 30 days. Within 30 days. Sound like a deal? Fantastic! I think Kelly has earned her Junior Ranger badge, which we pin right, right on the, there yep. we go. Yep. All right, my fancy sweater. Yeah. Dun, da, da, da. Perfect. What do you think? It's almost as good as ours. It's almost. There's is real, mine is plastic. <laughs> but that's okay, because we all have fun in Glacier Bay each and every time we come, and I'd like to thank both Zach and JT. Don't forget to tell them how to get their Junior Ranger. Oh yes, yeah, sorry, sorry. Yeah. We have a Junior Ranger program, and every week we do it at one o'clock up in Club Hal. So if you too would like to earn a Junior Ranger, junior ranger badge, um, please come up to Club Hal at one o'clock and meet one of the Rangers, and you too will have to take that very serious oath. So. Thank you again. Thanks for Our being pleasure. here. Thanks for bringing us to this incredible place and sharing it with us. Zach, JT, my name's Kelly. Thank you, and we'll see you around the ship. Have, Have a great day. Go. All right, now it's time for the weather with Weather Girl Tam. Take it away, Tam. Well, yes, we are in Glacier Bay today, and as you can see, I'm standing out on the back deck. There's a little bit of rain, a little bit of drizzle, and a lot of fog. But you didn't come to Alaska for the weather, did you? You came for the view, and today has been absolutely spectacular. Now, one of the opportunities that you get to have in Glacier Bay is to take the polar bear plunge. Now, that is something that you can only do in Alaska, and it takes place right here at our back pool. You will voluntarily, yes, and I said voluntarily, <laughs> choose to jump into the pool while surrounded by icebergs. Sounds silly? Well, let's see what you're in for. I'm going to test this out 
very trepidatiously. Holy Toledo, that's <laughs> it! <laughs> Got you! Oh. <laughs> Got you oh. again! <laughs> So good morning everyone and today we are of course in Glacier Bay. Hope you are enjoying the scenery outside and tomorrow we will be in Ketchikan. So my name is Gretchen once again. I am part of your shore excursions team on board and we are here to uh, just tell you just a little bit as to what you can do and see in Ketchikan because of course we don't want you to miss anything in Ketchikan especially those guests who boarded or joined us yesterday in Skagway. Oh and I'd see my boss Kevin and he's just going to tell you a few uh, things to do in Ketchikan. Oh my goodness me, it's absolutely gorgeous out there guys, get out there. But the other thing you have to remember is that we are indeed in Ketchikan tomorrow. Now, Ketchikan has more diversity of tour than any other port we offer. From things like snorkeling. Who would ever think of snorkeling in Alaska? You could go home and say, guess what I did in Alaska? I snorkeled. We've got adventure carts, we've got zip lining. What else have we got? We've oh. got so many things. And don't forget the crab feast. The crab yeah. feast. Native culture is kept very much alive here in Ketchikan with all their totem poles, of course. Saxman Native Village and the Totem Bite State Park will give you all that sort of stuff. Yeah, and the Lumberjack Show. So very fun and entertaining and great tour to do for the whole family. So as you can see, a lot of things to do in Ketchikan. We're going to be open at the Shore Excursions office on uh, yeah, when? <laughs> Ketchikan morning. So for any last minute sales between 8 o'clock and 9 o'clock, come see us. So we'll see you there. Well, as we said at the top of the show, make sure you charge those camera batteries because the photography opportunities out here in Glacier Bay in particular are absolutely astounding. Now to take you through some of the tips and tricks of wildlife photography out in Alaska is your location guide, Kelly. Good morning, Volendam. My name's Kelly, I'm your location guide, and I'm also an avid photographer. So I'm here today to do a little segment about how to take pictures and perhaps how to capture Glacier Bay, some of the wildlife, and some of the other things that are exciting for you on this cruise to Alaska. Now, as a photographer, I actually came to Alaska for the first time on a cruise, and I brought my film camera because this was in 2000. Now I am working with a digital camera. This is a, a digital SLR, but any camera will do. And uh, there are some very basic things that you want to consider whenever you are in a beautiful place and trying to get good photographs. Number one, always have uh, plenty of memory. So in my camera, I have SD cards, little chips in the camera and test this out before you leave home. So if you just bought a new camera, give this a test run uh, while you're at home before uh, you come out on vacation or at least try it before the big moment, the big day where you're trying to get the pictures of a lifetime. Um, the second thing that I always, uh, it sounds silly, but the second thing that I want you to consider is batteries. I have multiple batteries for my camera and I charge them each and every day. After I use it, I charge it and then I stick it back in the camera. I clear my chips. I have a very uh, strategic organizational system for my photos. But for most people, you just want to take the photos and have a good time. Now, one of the things that you might consider is here in Glacier Bay, you might want to put your camera on an action setting. If you have an action setting on your camera, um, for a digital SLR, I sometimes use shutter priority, and I will set the shutter speed relatively high. If I'm in front of a glacier, I can actually click, click, click my camera multiple times, and with a fast shutter speed, I can freeze frame those incredible moments uh, very quickly and very often in the sports mode on your camera uh, that's what is happening um, the settings for glaciers sometimes there are actually settings in your camera if you know your camera well you can go through the menus and find something specifically applicable uh, the key is you don't want to overexpose it white 
too much white can be a little crazy. So you want to um, take in the whole scene, maybe include the mountains, get some detail shots. And the other thing is folks, it's digital. So take as many pictures as you want. If you need to, you can buy another chip. They're very inexpensive these days. So um, there's a lot to think about with photography, but don't make it too complicated. Um, I use, uh, as most photographers tend to think about the photograph. I think of it as uh, a horizontal, but don't forget you can flip your camera vertical. I know a lot of people are always taking pictures like this, flip it vertically and uh, you can get some different angles. One thing that I will recommend is walk to the edge of the rail. Go to the, uh, don't stand in the middle of the ship and shoot through a lot of people. If you're trying to get a photo of the glacier, go to the rail. Always, always put the strap over your head, the strap on your arm. When you're in front of uh, something and on a moving vehicle, um, you always wanna have those straps around you. Um, but don't stand 15 paces back or shoot through the window here in, uh, in the crow's nest go outside and uh, experience it. Be out on the rail because everybody wants to be at the edge and nobody's gonna wanna step aside for your picture. Um, you just stand up against the rail and then you don't have to worry about anything else. Whenever you're thinking about composition, think about the picture that you're taking and try to put in the frame something that you could tell a story about. Make your picture a representation of an idea. So um, it's not that complicated, but uh, get rid of all the other clutter in the photo and just focus on one thing or two things. It's best if you don't stick stuff right in the center. Um, a lot of photographers use the thirds, the rule of thirds method, okay? so from top to bottom and from left to right, right to left, think of your frame as in thirds. Put the points of interest in those four corner points, thirds, thirds, those are where you put your key interest points. It's kind of a compositional thing from art and uh, the history of art throughout time. Um, what else can I tell you? You always need enough light uh, in front of the glacier. Uh, if you're taking a picture of your friends in front of the glacier, you may want to use a flash, but we also have our ship photographers and they'll be running around and taking beautiful shots of you and your friends in front of the glaciers as well. So that's just a few fun tips for now. I may be back later with more photography tips. Um, I am uh, at my desk, which is near the front desk at different times of the day. So just check your daily program. But my name is Kelly and I'm your location guide. And I'm uh, happy to answer photographic questions in addition to any question that you have about Alaska, our ports of call, wildlife, things to see and do, and anything else Alaska oriented. So you guys have a fantastic time and I will see you around the ship. Well, I guess that's it for the weather from Glacier Bay. Why are you even holding this? Because I don't want to get more wet. <laughs> it's bad enough now. <laughs> I hate my life. Oh. I love my life. <laughs> we'll see you later. Bye. Oh, Bye. No, no, no. <laughs> I need a life preserver. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs>